In this video, let's focus on the centralized layer tree gateway use case. Look at the configs used on both the leaf and spine switches. So we have three leaf switches here. Leaf 1 and leaf 2 are pure layer 2 VTAPs, while border leaf 3 functions both a layer 2 and layer 3 VTAP for traffic to get in and out of the port. We also have two spine switches that function as EVPN route reflectors, and we utilize a slash 31 IP fabric between the leaf and spine switches. We use OSPF to advertise the loopbacks, the slash 32 loopbacks, and we use BGP AS65001 for EVPN peering. When we have route reflectors in place, that means the leaf switches only need to peer to both the route reflectors for EVPN. Without the route reflectors, we need to have full mesh peering between all the leaf switches, so the route reflectors really help us scale the network. And I actually use a switch to simulate the VMs. Okay. I have multiple VRFs, VM1, VM2, VM3, on different VLANs with different IPs. That's why they all have the same MAC address, but it's fine because the MAC addresses only have to be unique on a subnet. On the layer tree centralized gateway, the border leaf tree, we can use VRFs for traffic isolation, for layer tree traffic isolation. So that means VRF A, the red VRF, the 1.10 can only communicate with 1.11. 1.10 cannot communicate with 2.11, 3.11, 2.10, or 3.10 because they are in different VRFs. But traffic within the same VRF, VRF blue, 2.10 can communicate with 3.10, 2.11, 3.11. And we use eBGP to peer out of the port. So the traffic from the VMs in VRF red can access its own VRF and access the traffic outside of the port. Same for blue. Blue can access VMs in the blue VRF and the external network. Let's start by logging into NetEdit, which manages all the AOS CX devices. This is a list of devices. Let's select the spine switches and create a plan to look at the current config. Give the plan a name. Create the plan. And this is the configuration on both spine switches. If you hover above it, the host name, for example, you can see values of spines, host name, and the management IPs. Interface 1 on 1 on both spines will connect to leaf 1. You can see the IP addresses assigned to both spines. And we'll do a no shot to bring it up. Same thing can be seen for one on two on both spines, which will connect to leaf two. Let's bring up leaf three as well through one one three. No shot. These are the loopback IPs assigned to the spine switches, and the same thing is assigned to the router ID. Both spines will function as EVPN route reflectors and peer with all the leaf switches. You can see one, two, and three. We need to send the community for EVPN. Let's deploy the plan next to push the configs down. And we can check what changed through the green arrows. So for example, the three ports to all the leaf switches are now up. We can also see that the spine sees LDP neighbors across all three ports to all the three leaves. From the spines, we can also check OSPF. So let's refresh, you can see it all full now with adjacency. From the routing table shown on the spine, you can see the loopback addresses and the slash 31 from the leaf switches. You can see 2.0.1, 2.0.2, 2 .0 .2, 2.0.3 from the leaves shown in the spine routing table. We can also see the BGP status now shown as established and up from the spine switch for EVPN. On the raw reflector, we will be able to see the MAC addresses learned. From the leaf switches, you can see the different VNIs, 11, 12, 13 of the MAC addresses. The MAC addresses are learned as EVPN type 2 routes, while the IMAT routes are shown as type 3. 
you can do the same checks for spine one. Ensure the neighbor is established. Now, you can also check the eVPN table to validate the MAC address is learned, which will be similar to spine two, what we saw earlier, to the multiple VNIs. We will now commit to save the configuration on the spine switches. Let's create a plan for the leaf switches next. Select all the three leaves. Edit run and config. Give it a name. And create. Let's look at the leaf configuration next. Let's focus on the two leaf switches, which are similar to leaf 1 and leaf 2. You have the global VLANs, the EVPN section, the VLANs. The route distinguishers and the route targets all set to auto. If we go down, we see that the lag 10, which is facing the servers and VMs, allows VLANs 11 to 13 with LACP mode active. We also have 149, which is an uplink to spine 1, and IP address on both leaves is shown. 0.0 and 0.4. 150, which goes to spine 2, is also shown. And 1152, which is the physical port facing the servers that is attached to leg 10, shown. And both leaf switches have unique loopback addresses. Same for the interface VXLAN, they'll have unique source IPs with the VNI and VLAN mapping assigned in the interface. Next is the BGP section, router ID, and they both peer to the route reflectors. Let's move on to our body leaf tree config next, where we have multiple VRFs here. We have the core VRF, which connects the port out to the external network. We use 65001 colon tree for the core VRF, and we import 65001 colon 1 and 2, which belong to VRF A and VRF B. In VRF A, we use 6501 colon 1, and VRF B, we use 6501 colon 2. And we import 6501 colon 3 routes, which are from the core. The EVPN section is basically the same as what we saw in leaf 1 and 2. Where we have the route distinguisher auto and the route targets auto. Only difference on the border leaf is the VRFs. We also have other ports that connect to snippers, for example. In the 47, we attach that to the core VRF because it's connected out to the core. And 49 and 50 are the uplinks towards the spine switches. We also have the loopback address, which is unique. The interface VLANs are attached to VRFs, and we'll bring them up now. They also have IP addresses, which are the default gateways for those subnets. Move the shutdown command. Not all three. Interface VLANs, bring them up. Under Interface VXLAN, we use the loopback as source IP with the VNI to VLAN mapping. Under Router BGP, we appear to the two route reflectors similar to Leaf 1 and Leaf 2. We also have the VRF core that appears to the remote AS using 1.13 and we activate it under address family IPv4. We also have the two VRFs where we distribute the connected interfaces to the external network. We can now deploy the configs to the leaf switches. And check what change, for example, up. You can see the VMs and the VTAPs that come from. For example, 2.11 is from VTAP to leaf 2. The MAC address is learned, the corresponding VLANs and the source VTAPs can also be seen under the MAC address table. For the sake of completeness, I'll show you the server configs as well. Edit running config, create a plan name, and this is what the server config looks like. We have multiple VRFs, and we click on one switch, you can see there are only three VRFs. You can see leg 10, going up to the leaf switch, and we allow three VLANs with LACP mode active. The physical port 1152 has leg 10 attached, and the interface VLANs have the VM IPs with the VRFs for isolation. They all have a static default route towards the gateway. On server 2, we also see three VRFs and the light interface facing the leaf switch with the three VLANs allowed with LACP mode active. 
you will see the physical port 152 attached to LAC10 and interface VLAN with the unique IPs. Let's now test connectivity from the VMs. So VM1 can reach VM4 at 1.11, but VM1 cannot reach 2.11 in VRFB. VM2 can reach 3.11 in the same VRF. We will now test external connectivity from VM2 and networks. Finally, we'll test VM1 external connectivity, which belongs to VRFA.